Agents Podcast. Welcome back, Lab Code Agents, for another episode of the Lab Code Agents Podcast. And today, I have a guest who I would consider an anomaly in the real estate world, especially coaching. And by anomaly, I mean a beautiful, smart, powerful woman. You guys thought I was going to say maybe something else there, but I didn't. (laughs) We, ladies and gentlemen, we have an incredible coach on with us today. And like I said, you know, you, you really, you step back, you think about our world and especially the coaching world, it is pretty much dominated by men. And I think that, uh, you know, Vonda Martin, our guest today, kind of fills that gap, fills that void of what is missing by and large from our industry. And she has so much to share. I've, I've, I've had the pleasure of getting to know her and she has so much to share with our audience today that I am not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to welcome her to the show. Welcome, Vonda Martin. Hello, everyone. What a pleasure being here. Good to see you. It's Good great to, to here, have Jack. you. It's great uh-huh. to have you. And, and tell us, so tell us, you know, where you're coming from. First of all, you today, you're Southern California, correct? Yes, I'm here in beautiful, sunny San Diego. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> jealous. Although it's sunny and beautiful here in St. Louis today, we do not have that, you know, 365 days a year like you do. So um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to have you. And let's start here. I'd like you to start by telling our audience a little bit about your story because you have an awesome story. Uh, and and it's, it's interesting to hear where you come from and kind of what's led you to where you are today. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, let me go back some years, some moons ago. I came here to America 33 years ago with $500 in my pocket, no English, in a suitcase full of dreams, my friend, full of dreams and ambition and uh, a lot of hope. So I came here as many immigrants. Some of you guys are probably immigrants like me. Uh, Came here and I did what I had to do in the beginning, you know, to learn English. And uh, I was an au pair for a while. I was a housekeeper for a while. And I was studying, I was committed to win. I I came here, Jeff, uh, with nothing. Uh, Middle class, low middle class in Brazil. Uh, My father lost his job and uh, we struggled. So I wanted to win. I came, I left the country to win, to help my mother, to help my family. So fast forward a little while, I got married, moved to Los Angeles, had a great pleasure to live right here in Santa Monica, then Westwood, went to UCLA, where I had more business classes. You see, I graduated in Brazil, Jeff, in business. So I had a chance to go to UCLA and do more business classes. And then later, My husband at the time moved back, we moved back to Marin County, had a baby. I'm telling you the whole story. (laughs) Uh, We moved back to Marin County and then he got a job in the Central Valley. And that's how the real estate journey started. He got a job in the Central Valley and we moved there and I had another baby. In 1999, I went full time in real estate in the Central Valley. I was there very, few years, three years or so, three and a half years. I had a, at the time a four and a half years old, a three and a half years old. And my mother lived with me and I, here I am in the Central Valley. Now, I always loved real estate. You know, I always, I, I used to dream about buying homes, flipping them and where we live. And I always told myself, one day I'm going to sell real estate when my English is better. <laughs> so I went in real estate and I had, a great year. Now, let me say this. Um, what I know and what I always say, Jeff, is people have two different jobs, uh, excuse me, two different problems when they go in real estate. Sometimes they have no leads, no business. So problem number one. Or sometimes they got, actually get busy right away because they know a lot of people, they're doing well, but they don't have systems or processes. So that was my case because I'm very hungry with a lot of energy, as you can see, very hungry, ambitious, and very driven. I'm a former basketball player too, so that helps, kind of uh, consistent and persistent. I actually did well my first year. My first year in real estate, I sold 32 homes. Wow. 32 homes, a lot of open houses, a lot of, lot of work, my friend. And then a second year, I sold 62 homes. Now, I had money, I was making money, but I had no life. 
as many of you here might be listening, I was working 24 seven, you know, just pushing and grinding and grinding. And then, you know, finally it hit me. I'm like, it shouldn't be like this. It's too hard. I, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to have money, have no life going three months without a day off. So another epiphany I had at the time, Jeff, I realized, gosh, I'm selling real estate out of enthusiasm, drive, hunger, energy, but I, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I, I, I just work in a lot of bias and this, I, this is not sustainable. I, I'm going to burn to pieces here and I don't want to have this life. So when I realized I need a coach, I need someone to show me the way, to show me how to cut the learning curve, how to stop the suffering, <laughs> you know what I mean? The bleeding. Mm -hmm. So in 2001, I hired my first coach and um, I was fortunate to have a good one because, you know, the, just like real estate agents, we have good coaches and not so good coaches. He was great and he showed me something that I realized I didn't have. I didn't have systems. I, I, was, I was not systematized. I was not structured. I was just going, going, going. I did have a transaction coordinator and, um, and I was getting a part-time assistant, but I just didn't know what to do. So right away, he, my life changed, my friend. I systematized my lead sources. I started building a beautiful marketing plan and a marketing machine. So very quickly, very quickly, in less than two years, I earned my first million dollars. I broke into pretty much every market and I became the number one agent in the, the area. So I was selling, so to give you guys an idea what I was, I was selling from south of Sacramento all the way to Modesto, okay? My main market, it was Stockton, Antica, Lodi. So I was not, I was not in Silicon Valley or, or in San Diego. So my average price when I started, the city was 275,000. My average was about 350 because I was in a little more high-end area. But anyway, so I built this business. Now here comes the beauty. And that's why I'm so excited about this. The beauty was as I implemented all this system, my friend, I was able to take Sunday off, Saturday by appointments only, and I became a listing machine. I mean, I really built this business and uh, built a nice tight seal team that became the top team in the Valley, number one team in the Valley. And with my numbers and my skills and a lot of drive, I became top 100 agents for California, in California for Cobo Banker. And I, you know, so lots of awards, lots of great things, love what I was doing. And in the process, I fell in love with coaching. I just fell in love, you know, seeing my, my team grow, Jeff, and producing, I, it was amazing. Seeing the transformation. I believe I've, I've always been a little bit of a teacher because I'm a baby of five kids. <laughs> so I was always telling my family, telling my family what to do. So I finally became a coach in 2010, and it's been wonderful. Um, since then, I coach for other companies. Um, I made a lot of millionaires, over 13 millionaires. You know, what I do is, I help people to have massive breakthrough. I take someone like, uh, like uh, Mayna last year, I took him from $980,000 to $2.3 million in gross commission. I took a beautiful lady in Texas because I help people everywhere. I love what I do. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I took a beautiful lady from Texas. Uh, she grew four times in six months. She was in 2020, she was not doing so well. So we took her from uh, pretty much almost nothing to $167,000 in gross commission in six months. So just what I do. I, I love what I do, my friend. I'm so happy to be here, share with you, but enough about me. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. So so first of all, you said you've been here for 33 years, correct? Yeah. Can you believe so, it? <laughs> so you must have come here when you were like a year old. No <laughs> <way>. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I am, I'll tell you because I'm proud of my age. You know, I work, I work on this. <laughs> I'm actually 59 years old. Wow. I, I have a 29 years. Thank you. Uh, I have a 29 years old and a 28 years old, two boys. And I blame my mother for the good genes. <laughs> <laughs> those, those must be some strong Brazilian genes, right? I know, right? I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, so let me ask you this. I've got, I've got a question. So, you know, you, you had a lot of success before the crash, and then after the crash was when you decided to get into coaching. So tell, tell us a little bit, because you know, I always try to put my, my thought process in the mind of the listener. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
first of all, those numbers were very impressive to do 30 something deals in your first year to do 60 in your second. That's insanity. I mean, that's really impressive, whether it's today or 20 years ago. Right. Uh, but how would you say that the real estate world is different now from what it is or what it was then? Oh, I love the question. So different, right? Now, different and the same. And that's the funny thing. Because you see, the fundamentals are the same. You have to have the set of the skills. So if you're going to work with buyers, you've got to have those set of skills to work with buyers. If you're going to become a top listing agent, you've got to have, have to have those set of skills. And you've got, you have to work on those skills that are the fundamentals, right? Work on the lead generation and you know how to present how to pre-qualify, how to handle objection, how to close, how to negotiate, how to build rapport and connection. So those basics, the fundamentals are still there. They were here 30 years ago, they were here 10 years ago, and they're gonna be here in the next 15 years. The ability to build connection, to build trust with the, with the customer is always gonna be here. I don't believe it will, will, will be ever be um, replaced by a machine. People need this. Now, today, if you're, not, if you're not on social media, if you're not doing videos as your communication tool, if you're not showing up with your video marketing, with your email marketing, if you're not building your brand, you're going to be obsolete. Because this is right now, it's so much easier to, to have someone make the million dollars in one year, right? Of course, you're going to have the fundamentals. You're always going to have to have the sales skills and the business skills. Now, today, it's a different world. It's very fast. You know, you have a lead, you're doing online leads, you're doing social media, you've got to be, have the communication of the moment. You've got to do videos. You've got to have speed to the lead. You have, people expect you to be fast and to be efficient and effective. So today, I, I coach people that had other coaches before and have been in business 30 years and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't do social media. I don't do Facebook. I'm not doing videos. So I'm like, darling, we gotta speed up the process here. We gotta get you in 2021. <laughs> so yes, it's much easier right now, I believe. What I've learned is much easier right now to make the big money, to help a lot of people, uh, social media, it's amazing, Facebook ads, and uh, uh, it's a great way to generate leads. So it's a whole different world out there. Faster, mm. you know, stronger, and in many ways, much easier in my view. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I mean, when you really think about it, I, I'm sure the competition is greater today than it was 20 years ago, but the technology is so much further advanced. Your, your ability to scale, your ability to be omnipresent and not pay for it. I mean, you can do it organically, right? It's and 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 20 years ago it was billboards, it was newspaper ads, it was, you know, dropping postcards and mailboxes, I presume, which is still something today, but you know, park benches and and, and grocery store carts and billboards are, you know, they still exist, but it's somewhat obsolete because you know, you're paying a lot of money for that. And all you have to do is be a consistent contributor and share on social media. And you're going to get, you know, probably 10 or 100 X the visibility than you are with those traditional means. Oh, I agree. I believe I agree completely. It's so much easier now. So, yes, we have more people right now. There are three million agents, three million people with a uh, real estate license, three million. Now, only three percent sells over 25 homes per year. So my clients are selling three, four months. You know, my average one-on-one -on -one clients are earning $60,000, $70,000 a month. I have people doing $300,000 a month, you know, many of them, because, you know, you can't do this today. I actually believe that the, it's not very crowded on the top. Mm -hmm. you, build, you build your beautiful marketing machine where you show up beautifully, strongly, very efficient on social media. And then you work your online leads. You do some Facebook ads, and then you also maybe have a company that provides you leads and you work on your skills. So with skills in your systems in place, when you automate as much as you can, it's so easy to scale up. My company grew like almost four times in one year. Mm -hmm. 
And you know what? What I do a lot, and if you guys follow me and like they follow you, I do videos all the time. I'm doing reels and I'm not 20 years old, <laughs> but I feel like it. I feel like a 20 years old and there's no way I'm going to be, be left behind as a coach. You know, I still have a real estate license, by the way. I still buy and invest real estate. But my point is, if you are not doing videos, if you're not reaching out organically, I have people doing, uh, we teach this, by the way, it's lovely. Organic, organically outreach on outreach on Facebook, talking to people. Hey, John, Banda here. Thinking about you, how's business? And starting the conversation. I had a client who um, in three months sold two homes out doing that. Free. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jeff. I actually got a lot of business too from my videos, from my outreach organically, and of course, and also some uh, online leads. But it's so much easier. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And and one of the questions I have for you though is is so when you're when you're looking back, and, and I definitely want to get into today because it's relevant. But there's the reason I'm asking this is because a lot of this stuff is timeless. And so mm -hmm. when when other than social media, obviously, but when we're talking about your breakthrough, so year two, you hired a coach. They put help you put systems in place, which helped you, you know, get to over a million dollars uh, in in GCI, right? So. What would you say was probably one of the most, well, probably the biggest reasons or the biggest changes that you implemented into your business that allowed you to take that hockey stick curve to much greater success? Love the question. So actually, I hired my coach on my third year, beginning my third year, because, and by the way, a lot of you guys might be thinking, oh my gosh, you know, why does she even need a coach? Because yeah, I had no life. So I was just pushing. This is what I know. This is what I believe. The struggle, the strongest part of the success, the strongest part of the process. If you are an entrepreneur, you're going to struggle. But the grinding doesn't have to come along. And I was grinding. And then so I did 32 homes, 62 homes. And I realized I don't even know what to do next. Not only I don't know what to do next, how can I keep growing? But also, I don't have a life and I'm suffering. I want to make it better. So when I hired my coach, the first coach, uh, right away, we put structure in place. And I decided, I decided what I really wanted. And I said, I want to become a listing machine. I don't want to be work with buyers. I want to have Sunday off. I want to work on my terms and have what I wanted. So Let's put a plan together. You see, just like in basketball, right? Like a, you've got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided, I made a decision. I want to learn the set of skills to become a top listening agent. I want to learn the skills at a high level to convert all those listings. I wanted the business to come to me. That was the biggest decision. I decided I'm going to control the market by controlling the listings. And I'm going to get so many leases that the buyers come to me. I can sell them. To, and I did. 12% of my leases, I sold them. Because even though I was a leasing agent, my buyers trusted me. And then also the other thing. So one thing, I decided to become a listing, top listing agent. And I worked on it. I was, I was doing, remember those recorders? I was recording myself on a live, a live listing presentation, Jeff. I took to a listing appointment. I said, Mr. Seller. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You know, can I ask you a favor? He goes, sure, Wanda. This is a listening appointment. The guy didn't, didn't know me. I said, I have a business coach and I have an assignment because I'm always working on myself. I want to improve my delivery, my service. So do you mind if I record our presentation? Do you mind if I record my conversation here with you? He goes, no, I don't mind. <laughs> did, did, did anybody ever tell you no? No, no, nobody told me. Well, I did all this only twice. The other ones I did mock presentation, but I recorded two live presentation. And anyways, I got the listing, you know, I, I did. But so one thing was the decision and the commitment to become a top list listing agent and I to learn the skills. So as a basketball player that played, you know, three times champion scholarship and all, I know that if I put the time, the effort, and I keep on it, I'll learn the skills. So now the other thing that I decided to that really helped me, and I think if you don't mind me sharing, I oh. think will help a lot of people here, is I made the commitment to become the queen of my database. <laughs> I, you know, because I was observing, I was going to conferences and, and seminars, and I noticed that there was a lot of referrals, people coming in, and I thought, 
Well, if I don't want to be in pain and bleeding, talking to a lot of people that I don't know, let me build this database and this VIP list so I can work on this and have a lot of warm business, you know, come list me. So I made two decisions. It was to build a database, to meet a lot of people, sign up for a lot of things, because I was only three and a half years in the city, Jeff. I was new. I moved there. So I needed to build a database to meet a lot of people. So I signed up at the Rotary Club. I was playing basketball with the firefighters and the police officers at the 24 hours gym. I, I signed up uh, to play tennis, even though I didn't, I wanted to learn tennis, just to meet people. Mm -hmm. I volunteer at the Stock to Women Network. So I did a lot of things to meet people. So I started building my database and then I start using my five steps database system. And boy, it worked, darling. It worked after a while just talking to people, providing value, emails and conversation. I, I did some events. All, all of a sudden I stopped having two, three come list me per week. Mm. So I built this machine, it was a machine. I, I love it, by the way, I miss that. I miss the, the listing presentation, I miss the hunt and the negotiation, but today I do with my clients. <laughs> well, I mean, I love that. And I think I think that's a, that's a really good testament because it's probably a lot of realtors, like I said, 3 million of them to listen to this and probably think to themselves, especially coming out of COVID, gosh, I really like being a hermit. I like staying home. Now yeah. I have to figure out how I'm going to build my business doing that or, or, or maintain or sustain it, right? And, and that's one timeless thing that will probably never end and will come back to a degree, which is, you know, the whole just networking aspect of things. And if you're a people person, you don't have to be great at much, because you can hire people to handle the things you don't like to do or you don't want to do, but it is a special skill, a special personality trait to have one that says, I'm going to go to the gym and play basketball. Eh, yeah, sure. I enjoy playing basketball, but I'm really doing it to meet people. I'm going to go learn how to play tennis because I want to grow my sphere. I'm going to go join every freaking networking group I possibly can because I need to grow my, my, my SOI. And now, and especially nowadays where there's 3 million realtors. So there's realtors in a lot of these groups. It makes it a little bit trickier. You got to get a little bit more creative. Uh, but so what would be the advice that you would give to somebody who said, you know what, shoot, I like people. I could do that. You know, in today's day and age, especially right now, one, what are some, some places that you would recommend people could go do this and, and grow their network? And then two, how do you, once you've infiltrated, once you've, you know, got new friends, new people that you're, you're becoming associated with, how do you delicately or appropriately, you know, work them over rather than, you know, becoming a used car salesman? And, and pushing a sales on them. Hi, I'm a realtor. If you never know anybody, I'm your guy or gal, right? You know, what would you, how would you do that? So first, where would you suggest people go do this to? Um, how do they, how do they weed their way in to, uh, you know, how do they weave business in? I love it. Great question. First of all, um, you can meet people today in real life, like groups. Also Facebook, virtual is a great way so what do you love? What do you like? Are you a hiker? Are you a, you know, do you like bicycles? What, what's your hobby? So right away, go participate in the groups on Facebook that uh, people that love what you do, because then you're gonna do what you love, you're gonna have fun and you're going to connect with people. And then as you share your value, energy, just talking to people and you being yourself with some great energy, it's contagious. So now, I was in the Rotary Club. I signed up with the country club. I became a country club member. I didn't even play golf. I, I live in a golf course. I didn't even play golf, but I wanted to meet people. I needed to meet, meet people. So, and I, I volunteer for, I raised money. I was modeling for Harley Davidson <laughs> to, to raise money for young women to go to school. So every place that I could give some of energy, some of my love and some contribution, I did. So Jeff, I volunteer a lot of things. So number one, what do you love to do? That you can participate, that you can volunteer, that you don't even feel like it's working. It's almost for free. By the way, I volunteer so much. In 2006, Jeff, I was voted the number one, the business woman of the year for the whole county. Wow. 
They threw a party, you know, I had, I have awards from the senators, the governor, the mayor, because I volunteer so much. So that's the funny thing. When you give, the universe gives back to you, my friend. Yeah. When you provide value contribution. So I was in the Chamber of Commerce. I was in the Rotary Club. I was in the tennis club. I was in a Stock to Women Network. I was raising money. I was selling hot dogs and water at the, at the arena and the hockey game to help people. And then it came back to me and you meet a lot of people. So one thing is, what do you love? Go do something that you can be authentic, that you can help people. And also on Facebook, go meet people, go sign up in groups and participate and give value. So that is my mindset. And I think it helps a lot, Jeff, if you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my mindset is whatever I do, I'm here to serve, to help, to share energy and love. And it just, it ripples. And people can tell you authentic. By the way, now people can look at me and say, is she really for real? I have, it's a so funny, Jeff, because I have a client that I coach today. She's in uh, Berkeley, San, G uh, Berkeley, San Francisco. She, she's doing, she, this year she's gonna do 2.6 million in gross commission. I coached her for the last three years. When she first saw me, she said, oh, she's fake. <laughs> Nobody can be the happy all the time, the energy at the time. So she thought I was fake until she got to know me. So my point is, be you, be excited, be enthusiastic, share. You don't have to ask for business, but you want to let them know what you do. Yeah. Does this make sense? So when you, for example, Rotary Club, my friend, I was servicing, helping volunteers at the Rotary for 11 years. My first five years, nothing happened. And then after that, oh my God, I sold the home to the president. I, I sold the home of the director of this. And again, give, participate, show your energy, let them know. And then through your social media, social proof, your videos. And of course, you know, ask permission to give them information. I ask them permission. Hey, can I send you information about the market once in a while? Can I let you know what's going on? They say, sure. And then as, as you put them in your VIP email list, so they see you in person. They see you on Facebook and Instagram. Now they get your emails and it builds their credibility, builds their reputation. And you start, you know, being you. I mean, they, they, they're going to love you. They're going to trust you. Yeah. So I would just say, be yourself, be authentic, but share the energy, share some of the excitement. Let me give an example. Can I give an example, Jeff? Please, please. I'll, I would go to the gym. Oh my gosh. I sold so many homes at the gym. Not only the, the police officers, the firefighters that I play basketball with, but my bodies are in the gym. So I would walk in and people sometimes would say, six o'clock in the morning, by the way, I was going to the gym at six o'clock in the morning because you know you gotta do it early to get it done out of the way, right? Yep. So I would walk in and sometimes, sometimes people would say, hey, Vanda, how's the market? Right? Mm -hmm. The famous phrase, how's the market? Mm -hmm. I would say, oh my gosh, the market is so hot. Excellent. By the way, I just listed a home yesterday. So beautiful. Awesome. In Brookside West. It's lovely. Three bedrooms, two baths. It's lovely. And they'll say, oh, yeah. And then I'll say, hey, let me ask you. Are you curious just to know about the market? Or are you guys thinking about moving? And smile. And they go, oh, now we actually, I'm thinking about buying an investment property. Oh, you are? How nice. Well, let me know what you have in mind. We start talking. I'll set an appointment right there. Or sometimes I'll say, oh, my God. I can't believe it, you know, we're talking here. Hey, I just listed a beautiful home. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Sometimes I just share the excitement. And then I'll get a phone call, four o'clock. Hey, Vanda, you told me about the house on Brookside West this morning. Can you show it to me? So it's very, it's very organic. It's very natural. When you, when you share your enthusiasm, your passion, and, and you just, you know, be there for the people, they know you're authentic. They want to give it back to you. Yeah. Does this answer your question, my friend? A hundred percent. Now, what do you say to the person? So you've got it naturally, right? It just comes to you. Energy comes to you. You enjoy being around people. You enjoy networking. What about the person that says, yeah, I struggle with that. That's not me. I'd rather not do it that way. What do you say to them? I appreciate that. First of all, I would say this to you. Those are skills. I practice those lines. Okay. I didn't know. I, people used to say, how is the market? I would just say, market is great and end there. So those lines, everything I learned, I've been practicing. I've learned with great mentors, great giants. So you can be versatile. So first of all, become versatile. Otherwise, you just want to do one, two lead sources. Versatility, the ability to adapt to other people. So go network, even if, even if you're not expressive like me. See, I'm a driver at work. 
I'm expressive in ca casual, natural style. If you know the personality styles, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm 99% driver, 99% expressive. At work, I'm like, bam. Casual, flowers, blings, right? So my point is, don't box yourself. Oh, this is not me. By the way, this is a limitation. This is a paradigm. Get rid of that. You know, go networking, even if you don't have to be Vanda style. Just be you. Show up and volunteer. Do what you love. So number one is get rid of those limitations. Of, this is not me. You can do anything. Second, if, if yes, if you don't want to throw a party, a huge super open house, or networking like me, by the way, great way, the biggest way to get the high-end listings and luxury listings and networking with the wealthy people, go where they are. The other thing is, you know, you can nicely, elegantly talk to people organically on your Facebook groups. You can do your videos with and put on your YouTube and send your VIP list. You can build credibility, authority, trust immensely today through yeah. social media, right? Through your VIP list. If you're not emailing your whole database, CIM, every week, even once or twice, you're missing out. Yeah. So again, decide, this is what I want. This is my six, yeah, I'm sorry. It seems like I'm coaching, right, Jeff? <laughs> well, you know what? It's in your blood. That's okay. Keep going. It is. I can't help it. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. My family used to call me Saint Vanda. Saint? Saint Vanda in Portuguese, because if you tell me something, right away, I want to help you. I want to fix you. <laughs> I love it. I love it, it is in my blood, my friend. No, so I, I, I love it. I love, well, and that's, and that's really good. I mean, that's great advice. I mean, obviously, and it, it, it's... Um, a lot of what you're saying too is is it's not necessarily new but it's kind of like new again because you know here we are hopefully working our way out of a covid world you know hopefully mm -hmm. in the next couple of years we get some normalcy back if not sooner but that's the reality of this and there's so many new realtors in the business as also as a result of covid and i think they need to hear this stuff because they need to understand that success is not business. And I won't even call it success. Just business is not just going to show up at your front door one day. And it's not, you know, you're not probably going to have a lot of success if you're just sitting back and saying at family and friends, hey, you know, I'm a realtor. I just want to remind you of that. It's That's not how it works. I mean, you're going to have to grind. You're going to have to hustle. And you already, you know, you really talk to about uh, two uh, profound aspects of, of doing that, which is. A, the networking and how you can be very creative with it and build it around your hobbies, build it around your life, but also uh, social media, which is now what you have today. So you didn't have this, you know, 10 to 20 years ago, social media. Now we have it today. Uh, it's, it's one of my passion points and to speak about it and coach about it and do all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to, you don't have to get me psyched up about it, uh, but I would like you to get our audience psyched up about it. And that is, the opportunity that exists on social. And so you've mentioned a little bit about Facebook. Uh, what do you think about all of the platforms? What do you think about Instagram? What do you think about TikTok and, and YouTube and LinkedIn? And you know, where, where would you advise somebody based on your experience that they could really go all in and probably have a massive impact on their business? For, you know, for example, what do you coach your clients? What do you tell them to do? What have they done that you've seen results from? Share that with us. Oh, I love, love the question. By the way, I coach my clients out there and I help them to release those limitations. Oh, you know, this is not me. I'm shy. Or I, you know, I can't do videos, you know. Uh, you know, I said, listen, if I can do it at my age and do it, anybody can. I speak sometimes broken English. Sometimes I strangle the language and I don't care because it's not about perfection. It's about progression and it's about caring. So immediately anybody can do it. And by the way, I, they know, they follow me because I do exactly what I teach. I believe in you've got to lead by example. So I tell them, listen, it's not only the content. Consistency is more important than content. So if you, if you follow me, and I hope you do, uh, you're going to see that I, have, I do a lot of reels on Instagram. And, uh, and I did, I think for one month, I did once a day, Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, because I, I told myself, if I'm going to teach my tribe, my great clients, one-on-ones and my group to be consistent, I have to be consistent. Love that. 
If I'm going to show my kids how to play the game, I got to play the game and I got to work on my fundamentals and, you know, uh, work on my skills and work on my systems as well. So let me give you guys some good, good money, good gold. Ready? <laughs> Please. I have a great guy, a virtual assistant that posts all the stuff for me. So look, I do exactly what I teach. So I have a YouTube channel where I post almost one, uh, pretty much one video per week. On Instagram, I do stories, I do reels. I, uh, my reel from Instagram, my virtual assistant, who's a great guy, he's with me for a while. He posts that reel on Facebook, on my personal page, on my business page, on my business coaching private group. He posts on my public, I mean, open uh, free group, Real Estate uh, the Warriors. He also posts on LinkedIn and TikTok. So I'm not doing that. I'm out there helping other people. I'm out there doing more videos, recording my new course. I'm recording a new course right now called The Conversion Code. Super excited about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm making, helping other people to transform, helping other people to make money. And I do the, I put the content in place. I know what I want to do. Here's my, my audience. Here's my message. Here's my, the gold. And here's what I'm going to close with. I do the videos and then he posts everywhere. So when people tell me, oh, I can't do this. I don't have the time. Darling, for $7, you can get a virtual assistant in even another country, help someone. And you do the videos and you put on your, you know, on your drive and they do it for you. So I'm not posting everywhere, but I do that. So do your videos, get a YouTube channel, send your videos, one video, two videos to your database every month, plus two other emails or more. So the, the idea is, so Jeff, to make a long story short is, what do you want? What's your plan? Okay, I'm gonna work on my seven lead sources, my database, my file, my open house, my online lead, my social media, my networking, business to business, and maybe don't know, okay, whatever. Here's my seven lead source, okay? Clarity, this is what I want to do. Okay, here's my system. And I love this, I teach all that. Step one, two, three, four, five for my database. Step one, two, three, four, five or more for my social media. Step one, two, three for my online leads. I love Facebook ads. It sets me seven, 10, 15 appointments a week. I love Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta have the skills and the systems, otherwise it falls apart. So once you have what you know, what you, excuse me, what you want, why you want it, and then you specify your lead sources, and then you put the systems in place and you work on your skills and you keep doing it, doing it consistently. Like I follow you, I see you doing all those videos all the time. It compounds mm -hmm. and people are like, oh, here comes a lady again. Oh, here comes a lady again. Oh my gosh, she's everywhere. Oh my God, but all of a sudden the familiarity builds Friendship builds knowledge and builds credibility and reputation. All of a sudden, I get people say, oh my God, I love that video, Vanda. It resonates with me. I need someone like you. Can you help me? You see, it creates business. It creates opportunity. So if you're not doing videos right now, if you're not on social media right now, you are missing out, dude. <laughs> Do that. You are missing out, right? It's like this. And, I, and I, I tell you, don't tell me, you, oh, I'm six years old or you're 15, 12. 65, it's just a habit. Look, look, now I wear makeup because I like. I wear makeup because I like. I dress up because I love it. Maybe because, you know, I don't have a little girl to dress up. I only have boys. <laughs> but I love it. I'm, I love doing that. So I use, when I do my reel, I do filter 50%. Why not? The 20 years old girls are doing it. Might as well, I do it too. You see, I love that. But you don't have to be me. You don't have to be Jeff. You can still be you with energy and excitement. Yeah. So just whatever you do, put your energy, put a smile and come from a place of love, contribution, value. That's, that's my two cents. I love it. I love it. And you don't, I mean, I, I, you just validate everything I always say. And, <laughs> you know, it's like social media is only as valuable as the effort you're going to put into it. And I'm not just talking about consistent posting. I'm talking about video. And, yeah. and I take it even one step further now and tell people that if you don't have some basic editing skills, you're also going to leave yourself behind. You, you've got two options. You can either learn it yourself. You've got YouTube. Mm -hmm. You've got platforms like the Business Video School, or you might have a teenager. I learned from a teenager. That's how easy it is, right? Or yeah. you can do what Vonda does, which I have VAs as well. You can hire virtual assistants. I mean, a lot of these people nowadays, their their skill set is is as ad, as advanced 
as anybody here in the States and you're going to get them for the fraction of the cost. Their work ethic is ridiculous yeah. and they're very good. I mean, you, a lot of the videos you've probably seen of me have been edited. I shoot it and they make them pretty. Right. And, yeah. and it's because I just don't want to be a talking head. I know that my energy is going to be good enough. It's still going to be better than most, but I want to be even better than that. Yes. And, and that's, and that's kind of the name of the game with your audience. This I'm talking to the listener is the, the, if you can acquire those skills and practice and get good on video, and by the way, Vonda nor I were born to be on front of the video camera. We just practiced and practiced and practiced and screwed up and looked like idiots and just got better from it and pre- learned, right? But if you do that and then you acquire these skills and maybe even acquire somebody who can work for you to make it even look better, the perception from your audience is one that you are a damn expert. Like right. you, you, you said it credibility, right? And that's what you gain from it. And I love, I love that you said that. It. So can I add something? Yeah, because uh, can I pick back on that? I love that because, you know, people say, well, I'm shy. No, you're not shy. You just don't have the practice and you don't have to be bubbling like us. You can be you. All you need is this and this, isn't it true? <laughs> And a little yes. light in front of you. And then, you know, know what you know who's your audience, the message, what do you want them to feel, what do you want them to believe, what is your seat, you know, your, your call to action. Sometimes it's soft, sometimes not, but it's learnable. So to answer the other question, how do I teach them? I tell them, put on your schedule to practice. So 20, 10 minutes a day, twice a week, and you practice. Record, delete, record, delete, just practice. And now, by the way, can I share the tactics? I said, look, look at the camera and imagine you are talking to the person you love in the world the most. Who do you love the most? For me and my kids, the people who, no matter what you do, if you can say crazy thing, they're still gonna love you. So look at the camera and just say, I'm talking to that person. And then start with a smile, put yourself in stage and then go share your gift. So you, you, you're not worried about your voice, your looks, your hair, your pimple. I have a pimple right here right now. Don't worry about this stuff. Right, go do it. Just know, but plan, plan. Okay, this is what I'm gonna say. Here's my opening. Here's my pre-frame. Here's my body. Here's my pre-close. This is my close. The energy, and then go share. So stop overthinking, but practice repetitions the mother's skills. So I help them to see it, to shift from fear and uh, me, me, me to them, a gift, value, and then start doing it. I laugh so much when I go see my videos. My first video I did five years ago, I'm in my car. You know, I say crazy things. I invent words because you see, English is my second language. <laughs> but you got to keep doing it, right, my friend? Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, it's so true. If you think that you have a disadvantage, you know, try coming from another country and, and having English as your second language and getting in front of the camera. I mean, talk about, talk, talk about an objection. Talk about an excuse not to do it. Yeah. And, and so it's like, whatever your excuse is, it's, that's all it is. It's just an excuse. Anybody can overcome it. It doesn't matter if you stutter. It doesn't matter if, if you have even a disability or something that would, that, would, that would make you feel like you are inferior to somebody else. That's what's going to make you authentic. That's what's going to make people fall in love with you. And that's why you need to be doing more of it. Um, I love it. I love it. One last question before we wrap up. You mentioned the Facebook ads, which I think a lot of people... Uh, you know, their, their first mind thought process is simply, you know, the top of funnel leads, the junk, I got to go through a thousand of them to get one. It's not worth it, et cetera, et cetera. Why, why would you say it works for you? What are you doing differently that makes Facebook leads or Facebook ads work for you? Okay. Well, great question. Um, it sets me a lot of appointment. So my funnel works really well. They see my ad on social media, Facebook and Instagram. And then it drives them to my funnel. During my funnel, I have a great video where with my energy, with my knowledge and my care, I show them, I let them see with awareness some of the pain they're going through. And I show them this possible to fix the pain. And the video is, uh, uh, well, the word is, is resonates with them enough to set appointments. Mm-hmm. So now I also set appointments, you know, again, I have a survey and I see, you know, who is a, a great candidate. Uh, but of course, some people will not show up. So the Facebook, in this case, for real estate agents, uh, I had a client, uh, I have a client, she coaches with me and she's a beautiful lady, two years old in the business, Melanie, she's in Boston. One Facebook ad strategy that we give to her, she got a $4 million listing. First year in the business, 
Now she's two years in the business. She sold the, the listing, $4 million. This year, just in March, she sold five homes. Second year in the business, she's kicking ass. <laughs> so again, um, it works. So yes, direct your Facebook ads is gonna be buyers or it's gonna be sellers. Now what happened, Jeff, is they put the Facebook ads, but they don't have a follow-up system. The leads come in, nobody follow up. You gotta follow up eight to 12 times right away the first four, three, four days. You gotta go door knock and bring the CMA if, if it's a listing, uh, 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 someone wants to know about the home, about the property. We did a, uh, one of my clients right here in the Silicon Valley in, in California, we helped her to hire someone to help her with Facebook ads. She's expressive like me, <laughs> so she's not doing it. She hires someone to help hold Facebook ads. One ad, I think she didn't spend a lot of money. She got 67 leads. She converts some of those leads. Again, so number one, have the right ad that fits what you want. Second, you know, do you have the funnel who you drive to your page, to your landing page? Third is, do you have the skills to talk to the people? Listen, I want to finish this here too, saying that it's called skills system structure. If you don't have the skills to convert those leads when they come to you, you're going to miss out. I can give you 20 Facebook ads right now. If you don't know how to build trust, build rapport, present, remove the fears, negotiate and close with them, you don't get appointments. So skills is fundamental, 80% of everything. And then you've got to have the structure. How is your lead follow-up? system. So many of them, they don't have a system. It doesn't work. Zulu doesn't work. Truly doesn't work. Facebook ads doesn't work. No. How is your skills? How is your follow-up system? What are you doing to nurture those leads? You know what I mean? It works. Totally. Totally. I love it. I love it. So Wanda, tell us this. So obviously, you know, I, I hit on this in the beginning. There are not a lot of female coaches in the real estate space, and you are one of them. So you, know, you clearly have a ton of energy. You've got a ton of success. I know your website, vondamartin.com. Uh, there's there's a lot of testimonials on there. There's a lot of examples, what your clients are saying. Where is it? So I just gave that, vondamartin.com. Vondamartin.com. Where can people go connect with you? Where else well, would you say? So easy. You can Google me right now, Vanda Ferreira Martin. Vanda, even Vanda Martin, you can Google me. You're going to see I wrote a book. So I'm on Instagram, Vanda F. Martin. I'm on Facebook, Vanda Ferreira Martin. F-E-R-R-E-I-R-A. -R -R -E -R -R <laughs> That's my Brazilian Ferreira. So Vanda Ferreira Marta, but you can Google me right now. Just put Vanda Marta Real Estate. You're going to see all my stuff. I have a book on Amazon, The That's Art that. of High Energy, uh, a bestseller book. So I love what I do. I love being here. And I, I know I went on and talk about because I get so excited, so much I want to share with you guys. <laughs> I think it's great. And well, I, I will say one last thing in closing is that, you know, if, if that is one thing that you struggle with, which is energy, which is, you know, displaying that and, and, and having, I guess you could call it a louder personality or something that, you know, just does it, that exudes that higher energy. It's, it's important to surround yourself with those people because oh, they're going to help God. bring you up. They're going to help lift you up. And so, you know, if nothing else, go check her out, go connect with her. Just having, just following her will help lift up your energy. Uh, and so Vonda, it's been a pleasure. It's been great getting to know you and I hope we definitely stay in touch. Thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Jeff, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you everyone and stay strong and keep it up. Appreciate it. Agents Podcast.